and the word says in the year that I in the, in the year that Uzziah died it was only a reference point and I tell you every time that you you know the, the way God does it with me now is when I read something if he says you're gonna be like a tree then I want study what what was the characteristics of the tree if he says I gonna mount up with wings like eagle then I want to know let me, let me see how the eagle functions because that's important if I if I want to know why is God using these terms why is he using these terms so that my life could be conformed in ways beyond the average fellow? Are you hearing me? the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Faith Touch. I am so excited that you've taken the time to join us today. This message today by Apostle from the declaration, we are heightening evangelism, is a powerful declaration because when we are sharing or when we are giving the gospel or when we are evangelizing, we are offering the greatest gift in the world. When we share the gospel of Jesus, we are offering dead people life. We are offering poor people riches. We are offering sick people healing. And we are offering lost people eternal life. I pray that the nuggets in this message will bless your heart and prompt you to go and share. We have come to the end of the year uh, and we are now in heightening evangelism. And the word, uh, the, the evangelism is a ministry. It is one of the five ministries, one of the five purposes for which the church exists. It's one of the five purposes for which the church exists. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that this one has so much demand on it because Jesus gives us a command. Jesus is the one who gives us the uh, a command to go into all the world. God made this possible. What are we going to go into the world and do what? Preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is simply the good news. The good news, brothers and sisters, of God's love. Of God's love for a dying and coetic world. John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world. That he did what? He gave his what? Only begotten son. That whosoever what? Believe it in him should do what? Should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. I want to tell you something. Um, and let me just give you these five reasons why we should heighten evangelism. And then I'm, I want to show you something from the text uh, very quickly. And it won't take me long to do that. Uh, number one, evangelism is preaching the good news of our God. Is, is evangelism is preaching the gospel or the good news of our God. The good news. God's desire is that man would be reconciled back to him. Jesus, what is the good news? Jesus came, died, he rose again, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back. He's coming back for you and me. Those who know him, he is coming back for you. I want to tell you, you don't waste time acting like this world is our home. If you are in, if you are saved, this world is not your home. Jesus tells us this in Matt, in 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 uh, John fourteen. Don't be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, He says, believe also in Me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. I wonder why he mentioned many mansions. Because it seems like that becomes our priority in life. We all want a mansion on earth. Hallelujah. Don't mind the big boys. Don't mind the big boys who make that their focus. And they use it. And they use people, uh, brothers and sisters, to fulfill their goal. Uh, number two, God commands it. God commands evangelism. Jesus says in Matthew 28, uh, verse 18 to 19, if you, I'm sorry, 18 to 20, I don't really have to go in 18, but I just want you to see it. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Get ready, because I'm going to move very quickly, and this is going to bless you. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes? Verse number 20 says, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All right. Mark 16 and verse 15, uh, put it on the screen for me also. Mark 16 and verse uh, 16 and verse 15. Mark 16 and verse 15. Everybody read what it says. And he said to them, do what? Go into what? All the world and do what? Preach the gospel to what? Every creature. See, we, we, we you know, and when I think about this, you know, as I was meditating on this, the spirit of the Lord says, uh, he says to me, Falman, which one travels faster? Good news or bad news? You all know. Which one travels faster? Good news or bad news? I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. Watch this. Watch this. I'll tell you why it is. I'll tell you why it is, Minister Raynell. There ain't no burden to carry bad news. We, 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 there ain't no burden. We carry it very quickly. I said we. Did you see I talk like I talking to you? I talking about myself. We carry it very quickly because it makes for good talking. Hello. What? Jesus. Oh, my God. No. It sells. Newspapers focuses on it. News media, they make their living off of it. Bad news. Good news, Minister Iris Walksdean. Travels very slowly. Because it needs carriers. It needs carriers. You see, the enemy knows, brothers and sisters, that he can keep you bound because he can keep you bound with a bad report. He knows he can keep us bound by fear and mistrust and frustration and unbelief. He knows he can keep us bound with those things. But he, he gets nervous whenever, brothers and sisters... They are those who come into who they are and whose they are. Because he knows that they are going to be the people who are spreading good news. Who are telling people, listen here man, there's more to your life than you what you're dealing with. No matter how bad it looks, there's more to you than what the devil is saying. Because God has sent, has sent his only begotten son in the world. And his son who came into the world came in with a declaration. I've come that you may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. In other words, he says, I've come to deal with everything that the enemy stole from you and restore it back into your life. The enemy, my brothers and sisters, he knows that when we arise on purpose, that God gets glory. This is why um, we, we must get an understanding that brothers and sisters of the command of God, God commands it because he is saying, you no longer have, you no longer given uh, the unction to sit in your seat. For uh, thirdly, it is God's plan for reaching the loss. I'm going to show you this in the text. I want to I go to the text. It's God's plan for reaching the loss. By the way, it is how I got saved. I can think back and I can think back that the bishop's dad I can think back to his and he never had a bishop title but he worked tirelessly he worked hard in the kingdom of God I can go back I can go back and I, I think about 
I, I'll always remember Pastor Roach. He only had one eye that he could see out and not, no reason why he shouldn't have been a bishop. And they worked tirelessly. And he took me to Ragged Island when I got suspended from school. I know Tennille didn't know that. I got suspended from school. I got suspended in high school, Tennille. In high school. Yeah. See, I want to tell somebody, it's the good news that has turned my life around. It's the good news that I am somebody. Look at God. Oh, I'm so God. He's been faithful. Somebody came, man, and preached to me. And I heard it one night, but I could, I'll give praise for people like Evangelist. He was, a, never, he was not a, never a bishop. Evangelist Clarence Ambrista. And that man preached, man. You know, when he preached, he was the overseer in Exoma. My God, you would feel fire. You, you, when he preached, man, you wanted to get saved long before he finished preaching. You won't get to the altar long before he finished preaching. These men of God who, who he, he, he knew he was an evangelist, it was a district overseer in the island of Exoma, and they preached the gospel, and I got saved. I got saved, and I'm so glad. And that's why I, you know, you know, I understand my mandate to be out there the proclaiming to somebody. Telling somebody, let's go, let's go. No, uh, number four, we must do so before the end comes. Matthew 24 and verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom, and I keep promising, we're going to do more about talking about the kingdom because the kingdom, brothers and sisters, is what establishes you on earth. The kingdom, I'm, I promise you, if you ever get a revelation of the kingdom, the enemy is, listen to me, all of his tactics are finished concerning your life. All of his tactics. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness as a witness to all nations and then the end will come we can delay the coming of the lord by not doing what he wants us to do number five this gospel is the power of god this is what paul says for i am not ashamed romans uh, 1 verse 16 i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus the christ why for it is the power of god Look at this man. It is the power. The gospel is the power of God. To what? To salvation. For everyone who believes. For everyone. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. And why does he mention the Jew first and then the Greek? Because brothers and sisters, the Jews are God's people. God is the one who selected them. That's why they end up in Egypt. God selected them. God is the one who chose Abraham to come out of a, a pagan family and, and then um, cut covenant with him, brothers and sisters, that he would be indeed the father of nations. God made that covenant with him. And then he, 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 he also made covenant with Isaac and with Jacob. Isaac being his son, Jacob being his grandson. And the scripture tells us that all of us are sons of Abraham, brothers and sisters, by way of Jesus the Christ. Because that was the beginning in which uh, uh, Jesus, God had, had given a promise to the enemy in the garden. Genesis 3 and verse 15. The seed of a woman will bruise the serpent's head. And he says, and you shall bruise his heel. This, my brothers and sisters, uh, was really the beginning of the promise that the gospel would come into the earth. The good news that, 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 that God had, would send his, his son to redeem back what was stolen, to, to once again bring about reconciliation. And that's why we are all given, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 5, we are given the ministry of reconciliation. And we are to implore men. We are to 
urge them to give their lives to God. That is what God desires for us. And if you look, when uh, I tell you, uh, um, go to Luke 4 and verse 32. Look at what Luke 4 and verse 32 says um, concerning the power. And they were astonished at his teaching for his, for his word was with what? Authority. When we are spreading the gospel, God begins to, to, to fill us with his word that we too will be teaching his word with authority. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 18. And uh, we'll see, and this will be the final one. For the message of the cross is foolishness to, to those who are preaching. <laughs> but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Are you all in the room? The gospel is the power of God. Because you have, a, when the gospel, when good news comes, it gives man the, uh, the, the ability of choice. It gives him the desire to choose whether he will accept a message or reject it. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be what? Save. All right. So the scripture tells us that those who reject it has been condemned already. But those who receive by brothers and sisters, we can go to um, John 1. He came to his own. I talked about um, a moment ago uh, that, that God, God's desire, he had chosen the Jewish people to be his children, uh, brothers and sisters, but the Jews continually rebelled against God. They continually um, turned against the order of God. And then when the Messiah came into the world, uh, they rejected him. And the Bible says, and he came, First John uh, not first John, St. John 1, I think in verse 12 or verse 14 says, and he came to his own. All right? And he came to his own. Uh, 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 go, go back up to verse 11 so they can see it from the beginning. And he came to his own. And his own did not, what? Receive him. Stay with me for just a moment, brief moment. Uh, uh, but verse 12 says, but as many as receive him. And talking about those outside of the Jewish race. All, every nation will be categorized as a Gentile nation outside of the Jews. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right. Or the King James Version which says the power. Put King James for me. Uh, um, all right. So it's just um, power just simply mean the right. All right. Uh, when you get power to something, you have the right. You have the right. I give you the keys for this building. You have the right. I have empowered you with the right to come into this building. But as many as receive him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to, those, to them that believe on his name. All right? And so this is the blessing of, of taking this message uh, to the world and telling dying men and women, listen, God loves you. And there is more to you than, than what the enemy is doing. All right, I, I've got 17 more minutes, so let me conclude. I want to take you and I want to show you something now. I want to do something with you. I want to show you, brothers and sisters, just uh, as we, uh, uh, from, from the text that you have read this morning. Let's go. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 6. We've read Isaiah chapter 6. I love this text. I haven't preached it for a long time, but... Um, here we go. Can I come down? Amen. Thank you so much. I want to go to this text and I want to show us something and how this relates. How does this relate to heightening evangelism? In this text, uh, the Bible um, um, tells us in the year that King Uzziah died. And brothers and sisters, you're going to love the revelation that God has given me in this text. I'm telling you. In the year that King Uzziah died, uh, the Bible says... Uh, I saw the Lord on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now I want to do something with you all. Please, please uh, uh, um, grab what I'm about to tell you. Uh, uh, if, to do a little history here, to do a little background, uh, um, the, 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 the writer of this particular 
uh, um, text, the person that is speaking is Isaiah. Isaiah, he's, he, he, he lives in the, in the era of Uzziah. He lives in the era of Uzziah, a very good king whose, whose father was Amaziah. And, um, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. And then he was murdered. And then at 16 years old, the people, the nation grabbed um, Uzziah, who was called Uzziah in 2 Chronicles. They call him Uzziah. They didn't call him Uzziah uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 25. And, uh, and they made him king at 16 years old. At 16 years old. And the, and the, and the young man... And the young man served uh, for 52 years. He served for 52 years. And the Bible says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. But something happens. Something happened. The word of the Lord showed us that this king, in the, this king at a certain point in his life became high in his own mind. The king got beside himself. Uh, pride will cause a fall. The king got beside himself and he went into the sanctuary. Now, and he began to offer, he went into the sanctuary to offer a sacrifice himself. And the high priest, the chief priest, and, or, and the other uh, priest came in and, they, and, they, and they, they, they rebuked him and says, King, this is not your role. The nation and the king will always get in trouble when he crosses the line. The king crossed the line and came into the sanctuary. That's why I won't tell this. I won't tell us. I won't tell all the pastors of this nation. If you don't know who you are, you really can't stand for God. They came in and they did not fail to tell him, you are out of order, king. And the Bible declares that the king got very angry. The king got angry, Lady Bishop, and he persisted in what he was doing. And because of his arrogance, the Bible says that leprosy broke out on his face. Now God could have started in elsewhere, but he leprosy while... The, the, the king was standing there. The leprosy broke on his face. In, 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 uh, in other words, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, God began to expose him right there. God will always show who he is. Brothers and sisters, when the king crosses the line, the church has been given a mandate to be God's representative in the earth. They're putting it on the screen so you can write the notes for yourself. I ain't got time to go in. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the church has the men of God have an assignment to be the mouthpiece of the Lord. A Amos says, surely, Amos uh, 3 and verse 7 says, surely the Lord will do nothing. Even in the earth realm, the Lord will do nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Even God will not violate the earth. That is why we must understand, brothers and sisters, don't be asking, oh, why, if God want everybody saved and he don't want anyone perish, why doesn't he just save us all? No, there is something that you and I must do. We must come into the divine alignment of God's plan. Brothers and sisters, we must do something. We must do, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you must do something. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna tarry this long. Watch this, brothers and sisters. So leprosy broke out on him. When, it, when Uzziah saw that he was leprous, the Bible says he left that place and he went back home. Went back home. And they hid him away. He served the rest of his life in a leprous condition. Isolated. He dwelt in isolation as a leper. A man who did what was right in the sight of God. Was cut off from the house of the Lord. It should tell all of us, we better not get 
Okay, let me preach to me. Let me preach to me. We better understand and don't get beside ourselves. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob keeps covenant to a thousand generations. Hello, somebody. Let's go back. He was isolated. And finally he died. Now you must understand that Uzziah was a great king. He was a great king. And because he did what was right in the sight of, of the Lord. He also, I'm sorry, Uzziah. He had a special place even in the heart of Isaiah. Uzziah's throne is vacant. Who is going to replace such a king? So God has to do something. Because there is something, brothers and sisters, in his divine will that he's now orchestrating in this situation. He is now going to do a reset in the eyes of Isaiah. Sometimes God got to do a reset in our eyes. Because there are people that we set real high. And when they are gone, we sit around as if the world is going to end. But God has an assignment for Isaiah. If you check this text, it would say the call of Isaiah. God has a, a call on this man's life. And so the Bible uh, says that God decides to give him. God decides to give him another view. Thank you, Apostle, for those powerful nuggets in this message today. It is every believer's responsibility to go and evangelize. May the Spirit of God give you his love and boldness as you seek to reach the lost and hopeless world for Jesus Christ. For a copy of this message in its entirety, please call our media ministry, 341-0502, and place your order today. Neighbors and friends, I wanna take this opportunity to invite you to our 8 a.m. Morning Glory service and our 10.30 a.m. Divine Worship service every Sunday morning right here in the sanctuary where I believe a word awaits you. Until next time, this is our year of Onward, Upward, Together. Be blessed. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house of your holy temple so this is why the woman didn't need to touch the garment she just needed to get to the hem because if the garment was an if the hem was anointed can you imagine what we carry on the inside of us get a revelation now when you hear the word says greater is he that is in us that is in me than he that is in the world I'm just trying to tell you something brothers as I get ready to wrap this up I'm trying to tell you something if you understand the magnitude of what you are carrying it'll provoke you to go out and tell somebody neighbor I just got to tell you I carried something so great I can't handle this the Bible says Jeremiah said it like this it's like fire shut up in my bones how many of y'all carrying fire and sitting down on it Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com. Or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary at number 126 Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for our morning glory worship service and 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson, and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station, and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.